what exactly is dark matter and dark energy and why is it that we haven't really seen it yet? Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about a new sort of possibility that maybe, just maybe, dark matter is connected to black holes. Welcome to What The Math. Look at this beautiful collision of two galaxies. But what you don't actually see here is, of course, the fact that somewhere on the inside of these galaxies is a very sort of massive amount of so-called dark matter holding them all together. I've talked about this previously when I discussed the dark matter idea in general using these two simulations in Universe Sandbox 2. And here we see dark matter represented as these sort of red spheres, bowls, whatever you want to call them, holding the galaxies together. What happens if I actually sort of remove them? Well, if I were to remove the dark matter here, and there's actually a button for that, look what happens. Just watch and observe how everything just kind of flies apart. So it seems that something is gluing galaxies together. It's, it seems that something is holding mass that we can see, that we can observe together. Now today we kind of think that, or not think, but uh, mathematically can prove that about 27% of everything in the universe is dark matter. But only 5% is visible matter that you and I are made out of. So if you look at your hands, if you look around yourself, that's only 5% of everything in the universe. 27% or over five times more is dark matter, something that we don't actually see or don't really know much about. And something like 69% is something called dark energy. Dark energy is also unknown. We don't really understand it very well. We haven't really come up with a good theory yet, but it sort of uses an explanation for why universe is expanding and why it's accelerating in its expansion. So something is pushing things apart more so than the gravity can pull them together. So what exactly is happening? Well, like I mentioned before, uh, we don't really know much about dark uh, dark matter or dark energy. We've been trying to find out uh, some kind of a, a particle or something that we can use to explain these red blobs, or something that we can actually use as a you know as a foundation for a theory. Because right now it is essentially it just just like a religious faith for scientists. We think it's there. We know the effects are there, but we have no idea what's causing it. And for this reason, uh, one of the scientists from NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, and I believe his name is Alexander Kashlinsky, um, he, or, and actually quite a lot of other scientists, started to possibly study the effects of primordial black holes, and let's just put one black hole in here, um, as a potential explanation for what dark matter can be. So in his own words, he suggests that basically dark matter may not be actually this exotic particle that we haven't actually discovered and may possibly never discover, but um, he actually studied this for a long time now and started to think that maybe there is a huge amount of primordial black holes that are essentially holding the galaxies together. Now, it's a very interesting theory because he actually found quite a lot of support for it as well using several different analyses and several different uh, propositions, but I'm going to kind of talk about them very briefly because some of them are a little bit too mathematical to explain in one video. And most of his ideas are based on the 2015 observation of the collision of two uh, black holes that kind of made its uh, waves in the news community. Everyone heard about the collision of black holes, but not many people understood what it was all about. The thing is, one of the reasons why it's kind of so important that we have found it is that it was actually detected literally within weeks of the uh, beginning of the search. In other words, the scientists discovered it a lot sooner than they thought they would. The, those two black holes that we saw colliding or not really saw them colliding, but uh, we, do, we detected them using a very sort of complex device, um, happened a lot quicker. And, in, and for this reason, many scientists now think it's actually very, very common. There is possibly a lot of black hole collisions, but what, what else was kind of unusual about the, the collision of those two black holes is that their mass was actually very similar to one another. One was about 29 masses of, of sun, and one was about 36 masses of sun. So there are two, uh, two black holes, very similar in mass, colliding relatively frequently. And this made a lot of scientists think 
and specifically the scientists that are actually studying black holes and are studying uh, dark matter, that uh, there is probably a huge amount of undiscovered, uh, we now call them primordial black holes, that have actually been in our universe since the beginning of the universe. They basically were created during the Big Bang, and there's actually a lot of papers, or at least one major paper, that explain how this could have happened. So these black holes were not actually born from, you know, the regular pathway of, of a dying star. These black holes were created in the beginning of the universe. And you, let's just collide these guys because we want to see the collision, right? Although I don't think it's actually going to do anything, but let's find out. Well, that was uneventful. They just kind of combined together. But anyway, so what we now think is that in the beginning of the universe, there were tons and tons of black holes and there's a really interesting study that discovered that um, if you actually look at the background radiation also known as CIB or cosmic infrared background radiation you can actually see these strange patches of essentially what was probably some sort of an x-ray and also infrared radiation but there's only one object that we know that can produce such a wide variety of radiation and that object of course is a black hole so were black holes there from the beginning well it seems that they were and you can actually check out these uh, patches and then these anomalies in the link that i provided below that actually talks about this in a little bit more detail it's an article i've read from nasa and uh the picture that you see there shows you that these patches are not really explained. You can't really explain them unless there were black holes present from, from the beginning that sort of caused those patches. And so this suggests to, to scientists, specifically to Alexander Kalshinsky, that maybe the black holes are at least partially responsible for dark matter or possibly completely responsible for dark matter. In other words, what he's saying is maybe these red dots right there that you see maybe they are actually these black holes that we don't really see and don't really attack. So he suggested in his paper that every galaxy in the universe, including our own, is embedded with spheres of black holes everywhere. And most of them are uh, approximately 30 masses of sun. They're not very big, they're not very small. And all of them were born in the beginning of the universe. They're called primordial black holes. And the reason why we don't see them is obviously because we actually haven't seen that many black holes just yet. We only see their effects there. They're not very easy to find to begin with. And that would obviously expect, expect why, uh, you know, they're dark matter. But I guess the most important finding from his, uh, from his study, from his paper, is that he used a simulation, and I'm going to try to recreate this, but I think I'm going to fail because I've tried this many times. He used a simulation where he replaced the hypothetical dark matter, the red balls, with the actual black holes. And it seems that according to his study, he was also able to create a very similar sort of reality, a, a kind of a background radiation that was also patchy, that also had stars and uh, all kinds of other matter that was formed just well, as long as there were a lot of these black holes. And I guess specifically we're talking about five to six times mass of the visible matter. So maybe we can try to recreate this here. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to start this simulation from scratch. I'm going to pause this. And just to make this a little bit more realistic, like if I were actually to just add black holes right now, and I think I'm gonna add the biggest ones. These ones are like, what, one million? Or no, this is 10 million masses of sun, and this is one million masses of sun. Let's add the 10 million ones. There's also Sagittarius A, which is 4.3 billion. But let's uh, let's start with let's start with this for now. We're gonna add a bunch of them, and then see how this goes. Because I think the central black hole here is 1.8 billion, or is it 17 billion? I think it's 17 billion masses of sun, which is about 3% of the Milky Way black hole. So we're going to not add too many black holes, but we're going to add these 10 million mass black holes just to kind of simulate the, uh, the effect. Now, I've tried this before, it didn't really work very well, but let's find out how this goes this time. First, let's just start by adding them right here. We're just going to add a bunch of them in the middle, then a, a bunch of them um, above the galaxy, and then a bunch of them below the galaxy. They're going to be orbiting, obviously. And what I'm going to try to recreate is, well, essentially, if I have these black holes hiding everywhere, can we maybe try to hold hold on to this gaseous whatever matter that you see and not have it fly away and disperse? And I'm only, I'm only going to do this to one of these galaxies because if, if, you, if you zoom out, there's actually another one. And they're very, very similar. So if this galaxy is able to hold on to this matter better than this galaxy, when I remove the dark matter, maybe I finally was able to recreate this sort of idea in theory. 
So according to Alexander uh, Kashwinsky, he was able to recreate this very well, but according to me, I wasn't able to recreate this very well because I've tried this before. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to let it go now. And we're just watching the dispersal rate. And here, after like a few million years, it seems that the dispersal is still about the same. So my black hole addition didn't really work. Now, two things may, uh, may be suggested from this. One is that I, you know, I added them in the wrong sort of manner. Maybe the mass was not enough. Maybe, uh, maybe they were, uh, have to be in specific formation. Two is that maybe the theory is completely wrong. And three is obviously maybe I have to add like five times the mass of the entire galaxy, which is going to be a lot of black holes and my computer is going to die if I do that. But once again, we don't really know. I'm going to try this again with more massive black holes. And this time I'm just going to basically add the super massive Sagittarius black hole, uh, which is probably going to make this galaxy behave very strange. It's going to bounce around everywhere, but that's okay. We can figure this out later. So we'll just add the most massive black hole we have in the simulation, which is the black hole that we have in the center of our galaxy. And let's see what actually happens. Let's see what if any of the matter that is in the center sticks around and basically doesn't fly away. Okay, I'm not going to add too much. Uh, this is already a lot more massive than everything here. And once again, we're going to just test if the gases here, if I, I guess these are essentially stars, but if this ga ga uh, gaseous matter stays in the center and doesn't fly away. So here we go. Now I'm going to try this again a little bit different and here we're going to use a, a bit of a mathematical knowledge to see if it works differently if you do this on a two-dimensional plane. And the reason for that I'll explain to you in a second but as you can see it's still it's still happening. It's still sort of flying away. So whatever that red dark matter was doing is more effective than me placing a huge amount of super massive black holes orbiting around um, the galaxy. Now, how can we, can we do this differently? Let's try this again. Let, let's try this by going into the same simulation. And now we're going to go into the powers here. And this is actually a really cool button. I discovered this very recently, making everything two dimensional. Why? Well, because now if you, if you look at it from the side, everything is essentially in the same plane. It's a lot easier to deal with this because uh, if you have three dimensions, you have to de deal with the uh, Z vector, which is essentially why it's so, so much more difficult to recreate stable um, galaxies, stable solar systems. But if you have it in two dimensions, I can now just place the same supermassive black holes right here, right in the center. I don't have to worry too much about the third dimension. And this will allow me to create a very stable or a hypothetically stable system. So let, I'm just going to make sure that nothing is sticking out. Maybe press this button one more time. And so now let's try this again. So this time I expect at least some of these ga gassy stars to stay inside. These ones are probably going to fly apart. If this doesn't work, then I don't know what's happening, but there's something going on and maybe just maybe dark matter is something else. But it's also possible that simulation that I'm using is a lot more simple than the simulation that um, Alexander Kashlinsky has been using. And maybe just maybe Universe Sandbox 2 is just not very good at recreating this. And as you can see, they're still dispersing. Maybe not as fast as this, but they're definitely still dispersing. So nevertheless, the theory is very interesting. So is it basically possible that the black holes are essentially the dark matter that we've been looking for? Now, obviously, this is one of the first theories that was proposed when we discovered that there was something called dark matter. But at the same time, we were nev never really been able to see them. We were never been able to kind of find out exactly where those black holes are and what they're actually doing. But since we found, since we discovered the collision of those primordial black holes, this is when scientists started to think maybe, just maybe, they are still out there. We just haven't really discovered them. It's a very cool theory. It's definitely going to change a lot of thinking about the universe if it's true. And the most important thing is that we also know that the black holes evaporate. They, they evaporate through something called Hawking's radiation, which basically means that slowly they will start shrinking and decreasing in mass over time, which of course suggests that, okay, so let's just say the black holes are holding everything together. But we also know that stuff is moving apart and is accelerating, right? 
So maybe we can also explain dark energy somehow through the evaporation of these black holes. Maybe there is no dark energy, maybe all of it just means that black holes are evaporating, they're not holding things as well as they used to, and because of that, the universe is expanding. Is it possible? Well, sure, it is. Definitely would mean that there's a lot more black holes than we think there are, and this definitely means that black holes are essentially the central mass in the entire universe. There are more black holes than anything else. It's a pretty awesome theory, definitely makes you think, and I'm definitely going to look forward to their future discoveries, because right now we haven't found any evidence of dark matter at all, other than obviously the effects that we observe from galaxies staying together. Anyway, let me know what you think about this, because it's a pretty fascinating theory. What do you think dark matter is? Do you think it's black holes? We'll find out soon, hopefully. Anywho, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll talk about something else scientific, mathematical, or video games related. Don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't, don't forget to share this video with people who like to learn stuff through video games, and don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed watching it. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye bye.